what kind of economic recovery are we going to see? Is it the more it falls, the quicker the economy can recover? You know, we're going to have a big contraction, a very big contraction by year end. I think you know we will look at minus six percent or so. If you compare that to, I suppose, in the U.S. and Europe, if you compare that to a normal kind of bad recession, <clears throat> you can see that this is a historically unique uh, contraction. Uh, the market has priced this in. We know it. It's almost mechanical. Once you shut down 20 to 40 percent of an economy, that's what you get. So as a result, we're going to see some pretty strong data coming through as the uh, as these economies reopen, particularly uh, Europe here at the front end of the reopening process. Uh, that's going to be inevitable. But we need to keep in mind that this comes after a something like a 6% uh, GDP contraction, which is uh, extraordinary, of course. Is this on the assumption of a partial lockdown because of resurgence of cases, or is this on the assumption that actually fr from now the economy recovers and, you know, cases and infections are kept at bay? I would say it's, it's premised on the notion that the reopening will continue. Uh, now, you know, the market knows that uh, there, there is this risk of uh, new waves, second waves, perhaps third waves of the virus. That's not news to the market. That's to some extent priced in. And nonetheless, I think what would not be priced in is that if all of a sudden things were to deteriorate so badly that we'd have to suspend the reopening process. So I think it's a uh, you know, a forward path where economies can continue to re reopen, perhaps under co under constrained conditions, but not a scenario where you would have to uh, go back into any kind of lockdown uh, regime. That's what's currently priced. Uh, Dr. Hildebrand, given a, a decline in aggregate demand, you know the textbook function here of disinflation and in some economies outright deflation. Forget about the textbooks. What have you actually observed in the last number of weeks about slowing economies and what it does to price change? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Tom. Uh, very good question. You know, I think in the in the short term, perhaps medium term. Um, this contraction is very likely to be disinflationary, so we're going to see some of the same price dynamics that we've seen for so long now, really, where we've had these structural, long-term, persistent disinflationary effects. Uh, I think in the short term, this will be accentuated, perhaps accelerated, uh, just simply by the sheer force of the contraction, also by the uncertainty, by the fear that people will have concerns about losing their jobs. Uh, by, by limited pricing power. All these things will play in that it, it, it will end up being disinflationary in the short term. Uh, longer term, I think it's a, it's a very different question. My sense is that the market is probably underestimating the long-term inflation risks, <clears throat> simply because we have such an enormous buildup of public debt. And frankly, we've eliminated, in many ways, we've called this a, a policy revolution. We've eliminated, in many ways, the distinctions between monetary and fiscal policy. And so longer term, I do think we should be concerned uh, about the inflationary effects, uh, you know, post-corona. Uh, but that's a longer term mm -hmm. story. Much will also depend on how globalization sort of recalibrates itself. Globalization isn't going to disappear, but it's going to be different. We're going to see uh, perhaps more fragmentation. Uh, that in itself could also have longer-term inflationary effects. So I think long-term inflation will be an issue. 